Hey guys, I'm in Northern Minnesota. We just installed this air to water heat pump system from Wiesman. This is connected to a house that is all hot water heat. So in floor heat, under floor heat, baseboard heat, you name it. We have heated shower walls in this house. It's such a cool project. It goes by Duluth Build or hashtag Duluth Build on Instagram and YouTube. I want you to check that out. Let's go over the install, come with me. All right, so this is the mechanical room, right? You've probably seen in my videos over the years, different pictures, things on Instagram, YouTube, on Mechanical Hub, where I've shown this system and kind of how it all went together. We've got a lot of different zones. On the other end of these pumps is up to, I think it's 15 zone this, in this, zones in this house. There might be even more, believe it or not. But we've got in-floor heat. We've got two garages, the house garage, and then we have a detached garage slash shop, very large, all being heated off of this house system, okay? We have underfloor heating uh, on the main level. We have uh, low temperature baseboard heating in the bedrooms on the second level of the house. We have heated walls in the showers. So that's really cool. We even have the heated slab in the basement, right? All of that is on this side of this buffer tank. This is a plastic tank, all right? It's not metal, it's not steel, it's not stainless steel. It's a buffer tank in that it adds a big mass of hot water to the system. It's plastic, so it's non-corrosive, and we're heating on this side, and we've got the boilers on this side, so our heat source on this side. This just acts as a giant hydraulic separator. It allows us to have micro zones throughout the house, little tiny zones like the heated shower walls. That's not gonna put a big load on the system. And it's really hard to get a boiler to operate for those tiny little zones. And that's why we add this big mass here. So the water's just being drawn off this tank to circulate through the system. It starts to cool down. Our boiler, or now our heat pump, will then just recharge this tank and keep it hot. Very cool, very simple system. It looks complicated. It looks, it looks nice, I'm gonna say, <laughs> very proud of it, but it's very simple in how it operates. All right, so originally when the house was built in 2018, gas boiler, that's what we put in. Great boiler, it's awesome. We're not eliminating this boiler, we're still using it, but we're augmenting the system. We're, we're gonna kind of switch over from using LP as the primary source. We're gonna go to electric with the heat pump. All right, so this is connected to the outdoor with uh, two pipes, a supply and return. We're running water out to the uh, outdoor unit mixed with glycol, not refrigerant. So there's no refrigerant here. That's all contained outside. So this indoor unit has a circulator in it, has the controls. We're doing all the programming here. This is really what's running the system. And it's connected to these inch and a quarter pipes that are going up the wall. We start out copper, we go through this nice uh, Kalefi um, filter right here. This is protecting the heat exchanger, the flat plate heat exchanger on the outdoor unit. Okay, very cool system. We'll have to make another video about that another time. We transition from this inch and a quarter copper to the inch and a quarter Upinor, uh, oxygen barrier Upinor PEXA piping there. We had to go with inch and a quarter given the distance. We got about a 30 feet of piping from between the indoor unit and the outdoor unit. We, we have a built-in pump in this unit. This unit is circulating the water to the outdoor unit with no external pump assistance, right? We sized the piping to be within the pumping capabilities of the built-in unit that kept our operating costs down. We just had to go a little larger on our pipe size. And so that was critical on de the design, but otherwise the installation is super simple. Two pipes running out there, right? Coming out of the unit are the two, you know, going in and coming out are the two inch and a quarter lines to the outdoor unit. But then we've got these two one inch lines right here. And there we had to redo the piping here so that we could accommodate adding this to the buffer tank. So then coming through here, out of the outdoor unit, it's gonna um, supply hot water and then return back there. So it's gonna use the heat pump to charge this tank. There's a sensor connected right here. It's always monitoring that. It's trying to maintain a temperature in that tank based off of the heating curve. So as it gets colder, the water in that tank goes hotter. It's able to enable this gas boiler as needed. So as it gets colder, 
this heat pump is gonna start to lose capacity, right? So as it gets super cold here in Minnesota where we're at, our design temperature is 24 degrees below zero, okay? We're gonna stop, we're gonna lose capacity at the heat pump. So this will automatically then enable the gas boiler as a backup. We could utilize the heating elements that are built into this because basically it would work like a self-contained all electric, like an electric boiler we are not using the heating elements. We're gonna instead choose to utilize the high efficiency gas boiler in, uh, because we've got a perfectly good system here and we've got a lot more horsepower and lower energy costs than using the electric resistance heating. Okay, a couple other things in the system. That's, that's that. It could be standalone because it has the electric backup, but we're using it with the gas system. Let's just go over here. Uh, and I'll show you what else is going on. Now, the heat pump has capability of doing domestic hot water, DHW, right? We're not doing that because we already have this tank connected to our boiler and two solar collectors on the roof, okay? So this tank is, is primarily heated by solar and as needed, from the gas boiler, right? This is all a great system. It's been working awesome. They've got a lot of DHW load here with five people in the house, growing small kids and growing, all right? This is the, the uh, controller that goes to the piping up on the roof for the solar. Okay, there's two coils, two heat exchangers in this tank. They're coils of tubing inside this steel tank and through that is the boiler water and the second coil through that is the solar, you know, the water coming from the solar collectors. That's what's heating all of the domestic hot water in here. Uh, we chose not to connect the heat pump to it simply because it would just be triple redundancy. We just don't need that. Uh, we're very satisfied with how everything runs and we're not really gonna save energy on the domestic hot water side. We're doing great with the LP. So that's the system, guys. I'm super excited because this Wiesman um, heat pump fits so nicely into this system. Super easy to retrofit. And if this house was, if we were building new today, we could size our load, we could size our uh, heating system on the load off the outdoor reset curve and go completely electric with that air source heat pump. We wouldn't even have to have these backup systems if we didn't need, if we didn't want them and we wanted to stay completely off fossil fuel. I'm super excited to have this kind of system now installed. It was a, there's a little bit of learning, all right? Programming everything as is with any kind of new equipment it took us a little bit longer than we wanted, but to be honest with you, my next one would be a breeze walk in the park. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, check out our two podcasts for Mechanical Hub. We've got uh, John and Tim doing the Appetite for Construction podcast every single week. They're doing awesome interviews from people all over the industry. And then Andy Mickelson and I are doing the Make Trades Great Again podcast where we talk about running our small businesses. We talk about systems like this. Andy was here with me installing this. Super pumped. He chose not to be in the video. I, I got to talk to him about that. Maybe you'll hear next on the podcast about that. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.